Yes, we turn our eyes and we set our heart. Yes, we turn our eyes to Jesus and we turn our eyes and we set. To the one who paid it all, to the one so beautiful, to the one who's chosen us, Jesus. To the one who paid it all, to the one so beautiful, to the one who's chosen us. Name by name, name by name. You said, she is mine. He is mine. She is mine. He is mine. Mine, 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 mine. Before the world began, we were already in his heart. He chose us. He chose us from the very beginning. He chose us and He made us His own. He chose us from the very beginning. He picked us. He chose us. You are mine. 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 Son of God To the one who paid it all To the one so beautiful To the one who chose us Jesus, Jesus To the one who paid it all To the one so beautiful To the one who chose us Jesus, Jesus, to the one who paid it all, to the one so beautiful, to the one who chose us, Jesus, 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 his name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Beautiful Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, beautiful Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
voice when we really get it i think they rejoice when we see who we are who god created us to be in him it's like i can see jesus handing out rewards tonight it's like i can see jesus putting a prize in your hands it's like like i can see jesus walking through the aisles going from chair to chair handing out rewards handing out rewards handing out rewards just take it take it take it take it cause Turning around, it's turning around, 
It's turning around And everything right now is turning around It's turning around It's turning around And everything right now is turning around It's turning around It's turning around And everything right now is turning around It's turning around It's turning around Cause this is the night of victory assignment over your life you've been given notice right here tonight that this is the night of victory right here right now right here right now this is the night of victory and right here right now right here right now this is the night of victory no more delay no more delay cause this is the night of victory And this is this the is night of victory, victory. Tonight's your night Draw a line in the sand and step on over Cause you're never going back No, no, no No, you're never going back No, no, no Cause every assignment over your life is done here and now That was from the enemy's camp Cause it's time to press on, it's time to go forward To the other side of victory And tonight's the night for your victory Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around Turn around, turn around, turn around Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around It's your night and turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. It's your night for turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. It's your night now and turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Turn around, turn around. 
He's taking your garments of heaviness and giving you a garment of praise, 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 praise. He's gonna put a new song on your tongue, a new song in your mouth. It's a new day It's a new day And a dark cloud is It's a new day It's a new day It's a new day It's a brand new day It's rigged in our favor. 
He set it up that we cannot lose It's rigged in our favor He set it up that we cannot lose It's rigged in our favor He set it up that we cannot lose It's rigged in our favor Hallelujah I'm 
bless you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We do drink deep of the rivers of your pleasures, as the psalmist said. Lord, we thank you for your love and goodness. And we thank you that you are here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Wow, thank God. You know, I don't know if you realize this, but uh, of course, every time they play, but do you realize that, and this is very serious, do you realize that that has never been sung on the earth before? Yeah. Ever. In the history of mankind, that melody with those lyrics has never been sung on this earth before. And uh, that's why it's so important that you enter in because it's a prophetic melody and rhythm and song and words. Many of you came in with uh, saying, I need a word from the Lord. You got it already. And so... Uh, there's a lot there. There's a lot that happen. You need to listen to that over and over again. But I'm just telling you, you have to understand the importance, the significance of being in the room or watching live, that that has never been done before. And uh, that's a God moment. And so whenever we gather together, uh, this is so special and holy and, and beautiful because we're in the presence of the Lord as brothers and sisters. And it's good to be back in California. You're like the exclamation point on the tour we've been doing. So... We started, we started on the East Coast in North Carolina. We ended up here in California, and uh, we head back tomorrow morning. And uh, thank you for welcoming us, Rick and Lori Taylor. Thank you for opening up your place again. Yeah, let's give them a hand. But uh, last night was very powerful in uh, Arizona. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to listen to it, uh, Kevin really spoke like, like uh, from a father's heart. And it was a lot about uh, uh, being free of failure and rejection, so on and so forth. It was powerful. It really set a lot of people free in the room. So if you could watch that, that was last night. But we're here tonight, and it's going to be amazing, and we're excited. And on these one-nighters, uh, Kevin wanted to do something very special. Speaking of capturing uh, worship, we have at the table out there, uh, live at Tampa, live at New Orleans, live at Houston, live at Virginia Beach, and live at Dalton 1 and 2. And uh, you can get any of these for $10, or you can get all six of them for $45. So um, I want you to consider grabbing those, because like, like I was just saying, the uh, atmosphere of like Tampa, the, when we did this one in Tampa, it was completely uh, fresh. And everything you see here, here on, on these CDs, is so fresh. And you can feel that presence come in the room, wherever you're at, or your car. So uh, stop by there. We appreciate that. Amen? Well, we're going to receive an offering. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sure there's ushers in this building somewhere. And um, we're so thankful for everyone participating uh, in giving. And uh, if you know, how many know Kevin Zadow? How many have seen him before? This is, um, this is a debt-free ministry, and uh, it's not about trying to stand up here for an hour and a half and try to beg you to give your last $2. This is, this is uh, a cheerful, giving, uh, uh, happy, liberal way that we just want to celebrate together by giving into the kingdom of God. And if you want to do text to give, they said it was going to be up there, but... Uh, Text to give, it's, I know it's on the screen, but uh, for those at home, you can do that. You can do text to give, and uh, we want to thank you for doing that. So let's pray uh, before we pass. Uh, I appreciate it. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to sow into good soil, sow into what you are highlighting on this earth. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to give. Lord, we thank you for uh, bringing us to California. And we thank you, Lord, that this offering will be used for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mike. Amen. We help me with this yes. week, man. All right. Well, hello, California. It's good to be here. I know we got some warriors here, don't we? <laughs> Taking back the land, right? Woo. So let me tell you, you guys know if you've been following Kevin and Kathy for some time at all, you know everything that they do, everything that their heart beats for is discipleship. And everything that Jesus did was set so we could live in victory, we can live in authority and dominion, right? 
And so we're so excited because this is, a, we've been talking about this for a while, and maybe you saw it online, but we have officially launched Warrior Notes homeschooling curriculum. And uh, we are beyond excited. We have the kindergarten that is done and ready to go. And so we wanted to show this with you, show this to you tonight. So with kindergarten, you have seven books. You have phonics one and two. You have New Testament. You have Old Testament. You have project-based learning. And then you've got two of the math books. Now, let me tell you, this is not, this was not cookie cutter. This was not copy and paste. This was from a blank piece of paper. And Kevin and Kathy's vision and heart for this was that the kids would understand their identity in Jesus Christ from the very beginning. <laughs> Amen. And so it's weaved throughout all of this. And let me tell you, it's incredible because their vision is happening right in front of us. And that is to take kids from kindergarten where they're waving flags and they start to go through the sims and they go all the way through to earning their associates, their bachelors, their doctorates. And then we be begin to see this generation raise up as apostles and prophets and marketplace leaders and ministers, right? Because we've all been called a minister. We all have a ministry of reconciliation. And so we want to instill that from the very beginning. And so I got to show this to you because the more I look through this, the more I get blown away. So this is phonics, right? And we're looking at the letter G and it says, so this is what you're doing with the kids. I'm a gift from heaven above. I will gather with the heavenly host where he is preparing a place for me. Wow. Imagine your little four, your little five-year-old walking around saying, I'm a gift from heaven. And I'm going to prophesy. And that is weaved through this whole thing. And for anybody that's homeschooling or if you're looking to start with homeschooling, all the grades are going to start following this. we got first grade that's going to be going to publishers very soon. And we're going to crank it out as fast as we possibly can. But the beautiful thing about this is, is this meets all the standards for all the states. But it way, it way goes past. It way exceeds. And because we believe that the children that we are raising up in this generation should have excellence. And they should be the ones that are the leaders, not the followers, right? If that sounds familiar, it's because it was in the very beginning, in the Old Testament. And you'll learn that in Old Testament with the kindergarten. It's fantastic. So homeschooling can get really expensive, but because Warrior Notes has partners all over, and whether you're watching overseas or you're here, you partners have made this possible. If it wasn't for your giving, if it wasn't for your support, we wouldn't have been able to do everything at this pace. But because we're coming together as a family and as a team, we're seeing incredible miracles. So thank you, partners, for making this happen. But right now, you can get the whole, whole homeschool set. We're offering it for $300. But for the first month, we're cutting it in half. It's $150 for the entire kindergarten homeschool kit. Now... If you've bought homeschool curriculum, you know that's insanely cheap. But it's Kevin and Kathy's heart that discipleship begins in your home, in your family, in your kids, and at the beginning where we raise them up. So we want, we're excited to share this with you guys today. And so you can want, you can, uh, we don't have any here. I'm sorry to say that, but we're going to start having them at the conferences soon. But you can go online, kevinzadai.com. If you're watching online, you can look in the description of the video. We have it all there, but we're super excited about this. So thank you, partners, for making this possible. Thank you, partners, for making this whole week possible, going coast to coast. We're so thankful. And I got to plug it one more time, but we have our first Warrior Notes School of Ministry graduation coming up. And uh, let me tell you, we're, I mean, we're, I'm excited about everything, but it's like I'm oozing this. And I know Dr. Zadai is because he's poured out his heart in these courses. And we're so proud of Warrior Note School of Ministry and all the students. For just a matter of a little over three years, we've gone from zero to over 27,000 students, fully accredited, partnership with universities. I mean, we've, we've got it all. And it's because heaven has kissed this ministry, but it's not for this ministry, it's for you. Because the body of Christ needs discipleship. The body needs to know that they're victorious. The body of Christ needs to know that destiny is inside of them. So everything that Kevin and Kathy do is to release that inside of you because it's time for the church to rise. Amen? Amen. Dr. Kevin Zedai.
Alrighty then. How are you all? <laughs> are you excited? Yeah. Well, I got a word for tonight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, t- it's time for that, that yes. The Spirit's saying yes all the time. And Jesus said his worst moment when his disciples weren't even praying with him, he said, can't you pray with me just an hour? And he said, you know, the, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's, that's kind of how, that's kind of how it is, isn't it right now? Um, the spirit's so willing and there's so many, much opportunity right now. And there's never been a more open heaven than right now. There's never been more opportunities than right now. And it's interesting that everybody's kind of sitting around instead of standing around. They're sitting around waiting to see what's going to happen. But I know that God is sitting around wanting to know on his throne. He's wanting to know if we're going to do something. Because he's done everything he's going to do. Now, Jesus doesn't know when he's coming back, so how can you? If he doesn't know, and the angels don't know, and the spirit doesn't know, then how can you know when he's coming back? So this is the kind of discussion that we need to have tonight. Everybody's waiting for someone to do something or stand up and see if they get shot. See when they take another step, if they blow up or something. Everybody's waiting for some brave person to advance. And the spirit is so willing to express himself right now. And how he wants to do it is he wants to talk to you and then he wants to talk through you. And then after he does that, he wants you to stretch forth your hand and pray for the sick. He wants you to stretch out your hand and he's gonna work with you confirming your word, which is his word, with signs and wonders following. So he has to have something to confirm. So he needs you to speak. The spirit is willing. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus, at his worst moment, realized that three and a half years, it wasn't enough to get his disciples to stick with him when it got tough. So I want to be like King David that discerned that that giant that day was his platform for promotion. That was his entrance into his kingship. He was anointed by Samuel already. But he saw this confrontation. He saw the inactivity and the fear of the soldiers and and of the king. He saw that as his opportunity to do something. And that is what you're supposed to be doing right now. There's never been a better time than to engage the Holy Spirit than right now. This is the time where it's really easy to be noticed if you yield to the Spirit. It's really easy to be recognized by just being kind, just being nice, by not backbiting, not criticizing. It takes more energy to criticize than it does to just do something. So the spirit is is saying some things about the reward system in heaven that Jesus initiated He said he pleased his father. He did what his father asked him to do, and and his father was well pleased with him. But see, he suffered because of his obedience, he suffered. In other words, just like in the desert, the spirit led Jesus. 
to temptation. The Spirit led him into the desert to be tempted or tested. He was tested by, by obeying the Spirit. It was a setup. The setup was this. Jesus came as a servant. He came as a son of man. When the, when the devils recognized who he was, he told them to shut up because he did not want them to announce that he was the son of God. He didn't want their testimony, but they knew who he was and they knew he had the authority to torment them and to send them out of the area. So Jesus was pleasing to the father, but the spirit led him to a place in the desert where he was presented with the ability to do a miracle. And Satan said, if you are the son of God. And Jesus said to me, he goes, as he said that to me, he said, I was looking at him and I remember the day that I created him. If you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Every temptation was doing it as the son of God, defending his position. That was the temptation. He could not do it as the son of God because he came as a servant in a body in order to say at the end, at graduation, he told the disciples, you're going to do the same things I'm doing and even greater things will you do because I go to my father. He could not say that if he did anything as the son of God because we are not the son of God. So we cannot do the things that he did if he did them by the son of God. He had to do them as a servant. Are we clear? Okay, so the spirit is willing, but the spirit is willing as, as you being a servant and being in tight places and allowing the spirit of God to glorify God, to glorify the father through you. It's in the hard times. It's in the tough times. It's when, it's when a thousand fall and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. And people see that you have built yourself up to where you know that your habitation is the most high God and nothing by any means shall harm you in that place. No arrow by day or whatever by night, demons flying around. It shall not come near you because you made the most high your dwelling place, not the drive through window, but the dwelling place. Okay, so God dwells with us, but he dwells with the humble and the contrite in spirit. He is the high and lofty one, Isaiah says, but he dwells with the humble and the contrite, the servants. So it's not your responsibility to heal anyone. It's your responsibility to pray and believe. He's the healer, you're the prayer. He doesn't have to pray. You have to pray. He heals. He is a miracle working God. But it's who he is as a person. It's not something that he has to try to do. He shows up and people get healed. You've got to come back to these basic principles. You're not working it up and you're not going to convince him to do something that he already wants to do for you. I don't want any of my family or my staff being sick. I wouldn't do anything to hurt them. I want them to have the best of everything. I think about them more than I think about myself. I've given them raises when I didn't get a raise. I care more about them. So why would God not care about me? more than I care about my staff or my wife. I would throw myself in front of a bullet for her. I would die for her. I chose to die for her when I married her. I chose to lose my life. 
It's not my life. It's not my life anymore. Yet she has saved my life. She has literally saved my life. I should be dead. And all she did was reach out and grab me and pull me back onto the sidewalk when I stepped down and a bus came by and she yanked me out of the way of that bus in San Diego. I should be dead right now. I've been flying all the time for about 10 years. I was flying almost every day except for one day off. For 10 years, I flew six days a week. I was tired. She came on an overnight. I stepped off to go across to, to a restaurant. I didn't understand the way that it was laid out there. So I stepped down and she grabbed me and pulled me back and a bus mirror just brushed by my nose. So your life is not your own. You've, you, you don't have a life anymore without his breath breathing in you. You have to get to the place where you depend upon him. So that breath heals people. He could sneeze and heal all of California. He, he, he could just, he can't, he can't, he's got to be careful about what he says because it'll, it'll happen. He, he can't joke. God can't joke around because he'll get what he says. This is how potent the God is. I mean, if you, our God is, is an awesome God. And you should read Psalms 29 and let and get back to the basics of who God is. And when he speaks, it says that the trees split, that the earth quakes, that the oceans roar. There's no one like our God, but he is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is a debt cancellation. He stamps canceled. He cancels debt. What do you think Jubilee means? He preached the year of Jubilee. He preached cancellation of debt. He is debt cancellation. When he shows up, things get canceled. When Jesus showed up, people came back from the dead. He spoiled funerals everywhere he went. He ruined the devil's work. It says he destroyed the works of the devil. It says that he went around doing good and healing everyone. You know what it says in Greek? Everyone. He healed everyone that came to him. He, he never turned anyone away. He was doing the will of the Father. It wasn't hard for him to just do what the Father was doing, but everyone was healed. He never once made someone sick, but he always did the will of the Father. So we know because if it was God's will for some people to be sick, then he would have made some people sick doing the will of the Father. He would have said, you know what? God's trying to teach you something. So I'm not going to pray for you, but I'll pray for you because you've learned your lesson. And so I'll pray for you. No, he didn't do that. He didn't interview people. It wasn't on, based on behavior. When people try to blame, well, whose sin was it? The parents, their sin? Why were they born like this? He said none of that stuff. He said this is for the glory of God to be displayed. Jesus went around doing the will of the Father. It was his will that he correct sickness. He, he drove out devils. It wasn't God's will that any human being be occupied by an evil spirit. It was never God's will. So it's never God's will. Just like it's never God's will to have any killing, stealing, and destroying going on because Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. He, the devil, the thief, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we know that it's the devil because it says it right there in John 10, 10. So it's the test. If you want to know who's working in your life, you look to see if there's stealing, killing, and destroying going on. Then you know that's the enemy. If you have abundant life, then you know that that's Jesus. I mean, it's just the scripture. I mean, how can you get this wrong? Okay, you, we got to get back to the basics of this. And we've got to be full of joy. Joy is a spiritual event. It's a spiritual characteristic. It's not something that you can build up. It's a 
it's a characteristic of God. It's a personality trait of God. It's a, a characteristic of the Spirit of God. It's called fruit. But it's really the Spirit's personality. So you can be happy and you can be sad, but joy is a spiritual event. Joy is something that's constant, no matter what. So the times that we're in, this is all for the glory of God. This is all for you to rise up and, and whatever hand has the healing power in it, you need to, you, you need to get your nails manicured and you need to get, you need to get, it re you get that hand ready to lay hands on people. You know, no, decide which hand is the best so that you make sure the light hits it right. And you get your hand ready and you say, Lord, you've given me the power to heal. Your, your power is in my hand and I'm going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. Okay, you're going to cast out devils. You're going to drive out devils. You don't worry about the disease of the weak. The Greek alphabet. They're going to run out. They're going to run out of letters. They're going to start. It's a, it's a different animal. Every four years, it's a different animal. Check it out. It's a different animal every four years. We've gone through almost the whole barnyard. Now, we're, now we got to the bats. Now it's monkeys. It might be senators next week. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. It's gain of function. The diseases can't get a hold of you unless it has to go through an animal. It has to go through an animal to gain a function. It has to gain the ability to attach to you. We have been wonderfully made, fearfully made. And it's hard to make a human being sick. It's hard to bring a human being down. It's hard to get a human being to die because God put it in them to live. So what the spirit of this world tries to do is discourage people because this weakens, if you can, if you can get a person's will to give up. If you can get people to give up, it will be very quickly that their immune system will start to shut down. And and they they will you will see a deterioration. But if you come to a meeting on Friday night in Santa Maria and you hear the word of God with power, it's something happens. Something happens. And you're like, "You know what? We can do this. We can take this land. It's a good land." Whose report are you going to believe? ZNN? Are you going to keep listening to bad news? Every night, including tonight, I'm going to mention Acts 17. It says clearly, but Paul was saying he was in Athens. And he said, I, I notice you all are real religious. You even have a monument to the unknown God. He goes, let me tell you, I know that God. Let me tell you about that God. And he started to say, you know, all the people that live on the earth at any one time, God set those people in that generation for a time and a purpose. It was God that did this. This is the unknown God. And we, all of us, each one of us are not far from him. He's very close. He said this to people that were unbelievers. But, but the point is, is that we are all chosen to be here at this time. Because God knew it. I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it. And then in Acts chapter 1, also, Jesus said this before he ascended on high. He said, hang out here in Jerusalem. And he said this, it is it is not for us to know the times and the seasons. It is only reserved for the Father. But you're going to receive power from on high when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So he was telling them, just like in, John, in, in Acts 17, in Acts 1, Jesus is saying, listen, 
it is not for us to try to discern and know the seasons and the times. We are to receive the Holy Spirit and be witnesses. We are witnesses. You don't go out and witness, you are witnesses. You're, you have a testimony as a witness. So you testify. And when you testify about Jesus, you are yielding to the spirit of prophecy, if you want to bring the Bible into it, because that is what John was told in the book of Revelation. There's more in there than just the dragon and some fallen angels and some bulls of wrath. There's, there's Jesus in there. And Jesus said, Jesus said, listen, if you testify of me, you are yielding to the spirit of prophecy. So you can prophesy by testifying about Jesus. So you announce him. And you announce his character and his personality and his purpose. You don't hold back. Listen. If people can get you convinced of something that's not even true and you start feeling the pain of it, then it becomes reality. And Satan takes advantage of people through the power of suggestion. And you can start to talk to somebody about they don't look really good and are you feeling okay? And before you know it, they start to sweat. And they go, you know what? I have been feeling a little bit weak lately. And if you keep going, you can talk a person into the next pandemic. Because we're very powerful. We can suggest things and our, we are very powerful beings. We can image it. And whatever we imagine, we can have. I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it, because that's what God said. If we don't go down and confuse those Babylonians, anything they imagine, they'll be able to do. So they had to come down and stop that because these people are too powerful. Because they're evil and they had unity and anything they imagine, they can have. So now in the church, we have the reverse. With the day of Pentecost, it reversed the curse. It reversed Babel. Now we're in unity and we speak one language in the spirit. So Satan is after our unity right now. So we need to get together and agree as touching anything. And allow the church, the body of Christ, to fulfill her purpose on the earth, which is the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. That's from Jesus' mouth. So the gates of hell can't prevail against, which is, you know, pretty much everything. I know I want to finish. I'll be finishing soon. Chick-fil-A is open till 9. I think we're still good. Now Listen. Listen to me. Jesus set his face like flint toward Jerusalem because he was on assignment. He had to do what he had to do. But if he suffered for us and he went through all those things for us so that we can be bought and then we get all the benefits and we're heirs of God, co-heirs with him. So everything he gets, we get. That'll get you kicked out of church. You start talking like that. Who do you think you are? Well, I'm a partaker of the divine nature. I am an imitator of God as a dearly loved child. That'll get you kicked out of church. Most people that ever did anything for God got kicked out of church. Jesus probably was thinking, I haven't offended anyone today. I think I'll go back out and I'll talk a little bit. People were, people were always hungry for the supernatural, but they were in need. The established religion was not taking care of the people. And this is happening again. And it's, it's, it's caused Kathy and I to be, come out of retirement. So when we, were, we, t- we retired, Kathy you know, had a business, and I was at the airline, and the Lord said, you can retire. So I was all excited. But I didn't know that what he meant was, go buy some new tires and hit the road. 
I was retired. <laughs> Amen. So retired. So now, now is the time to gather people together, just like David did in the cave of Adullam, which is, a, which is the, uh, the cave of justice. Adullam means God of justice or justice of the people. And David was hiding there. He had been anointed by Samuel. Samuel didn't miss it, but everything went, went, went the wrong way. And Saul was even trying to kill him. So he was in a cave. 400 people came. And the, the qualifications for David's new government was busted, disgusted, and discouraged. It says all those who are in debt, discouraged, and, and disgusted with their government. I don't, know, I don't know if Saul was falling up the stairs to his airplane or not. But he, they were disgusted with everything that was going on. There's like some strange stuff going on. I mean, people were saying, Saul, you know, you've been there 47 years. If he can't do anything, maybe you should step aside. So how many of your representatives you send, how long does it take? I mean, I, I think you could fix something in a year. Maybe we just send you. Well, that's what they used to do. The whole idea about being a representative in Congress was, you know, the farmer Joe down the street, he did two years and he came back and the animals said, we're glad you're back because we, we need fed. And then the plumber went for two years. The whole idea, the way it was set up was that all of us went and, and represented the peeps. Okay, so Jesus did this for us. So he represented us and he bought everything. And so now we have everything that he has. We are partakers of the divine, divine nature through the promises that have been given. The precious promises, it says, Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. Start with verse 3 and just read down to verse 10. You're going to find that Peter got the revelation that we are to partake of the divine nature and escape the lust, the corruption that's in the world caused by lust. We're to escape it. Why? How? Through the precious promises. So then he said this. He said, after you have obtained faith, Now, the faith movement actually lasted longer than the disco movement. I mean, disco was about three weeks. I mean, the Bee Gees lasted a little longer, but the disco lasted, you know, you, you could have just gone through the whole, you had probably all lasted through all the disco. The word of faith movement lasted a long time. But... Peter said, listen, add to your faith these virtues. And boy, there's another whole list. So why do we stop with just faith? Well, it's the greatest of these, right? No, it's not. There's three that remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest is not faith. It's love. So faith worketh by love. God is love. I mean, do I need to say any more? So it says, add all these virtues, all these character traits to your faith. And if you do this, same, it's the same chapter, chapter 1 of, of, of Second Peter. It says, if you do these things, if you add all these, these characteristics to your faith, they will keep you from failing and will present you blameless on the day. So... You, it actually says you literally cannot fail if you do these things in abundance. And the last one is brotherly love. So Peter got it right. If you love me, feed my sheep. Jesus didn't stutter. He said it three times. 
It's the most important thing that we have to learn here. So when Jesus was, was reaching out to heal people, the, the key, Jesus told me, to why you don't see more people getting healed is you have to have compassion on people. He said, I reached out and had compassion. And he said, compassion is you are full of passionate fire from the throne of God. But there has to be a communication of that passion. Compassion is communication of passion. It's the transference of passion. So Jesus said, all I was doing when I reached out to touch someone was I was correcting back to the original intent of my father. So if someone didn't have a body part, all he was doing was reaching out in compassion and correcting it back. Whatever people were lacking, I was reaching out and restoring back the full intention of God's plan for that person's life. So if he saw a little girl that was 12 in a, in a, in a casket and they were weeping and he went in there, he knew that the father did not want a little girl to die at 12. It just wasn't his will. So he commanded her to rise and come back from the dead because he was correcting through compassion. So you have to communicate passion, but passion is not a soul power. Passion is a fire from God's heart. It's a fire, and there's fire all through heaven and through the throne. Anyway, the throne. There's a lot of fire, and he likes to grill things. <laughs> so he wants us to submit and be baptized with fire as well as as being baptized in the spirit. John said, when he comes, he's going to baptize you in the spirit and fire. Okay. When Jesus was, you know, the house where they, they, they messed up the roof and lowered down the four crazy friends, you know, well, it says that Jesus was in the house and the power of God to heal was also present. It says it right there. It's two things. Jesus is in the house and the power to heal was present. And there's, there's scripture like this that you miss and you've got to get this. Is that God's working with you, but you got to be in the house and then he'll be in the house. And through compassion, you can transfer and you can make things happen that would not happen if you did decide to do it. You've got to decide that you're going to be out of debt. You've got to decide that you're going to be well. You've got to, you've got to fight. You've got to speak to your immune system. You've got to take care of your body. You have to speak to anything that's in the way. All right, so there's a reward system. And God created us so that we would expect rewards. So he rewards good behavior. See, he gives grace to the humble but he resists the proud. If you want to bring the Bible into it. Okay, so the Lord's covenant promise to Abraham. Wow. Chapter 15, verse 1. Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision and said to him, Do not be afraid. For I will protect you and your reward will be great. In 2 Chronicles 15, 6 through 8, 
in verse 6, I'll start with in 15, Second Chronicles. Nation fought against nation and city against city, for God was troubling them with every kind of problem. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work, work will be rewarded. Okay? I'll stop there, and then I'm going to go to Matthew 10, verses 41 and 42. It says, ooh, low battery. I got three minutes. Okay. <laughs> Matthew 10, 41, 42. If you receive a prophet as one who speaks for God, you will be given the same reward as a prophet. If you receive righteous people because of their righteousness, you will be given a reward like theirs. Verse 42, and if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you will surely be rewarded. This is in red. This is Jesus speaking, okay? In Hebrews 11, 5 through 7, it says, it was by faith that Enoch was taken to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as one who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who sincerely or diligently seek him. Okay? This is the key. It's in you to want to please God. It's in you to expect a reward. God did that. He has a reward system. So when you decide that you are going to believe God and that while you're down here, because you survived what just happened, and there's many, of, there's many among us that did not survive what just happened. They've gone on, but we're still here and they are cheering us on. And they are wanting us, while we still have breath, to believe God and know that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we can seek him knowing we're going to be rewarded. This is not that hard. It causes momentum in the spirit. Now, when you hear the word of God and, and you get revelation coming in your spirit, it might be happening right now. I would hope it would because I'm running out of time. So it has to start to ignite you inside. All you have to do is stomp your foot. When you get a revelation in the spirit, you stomp your foot and, and the power that transfers from your spirit to the foot physically, every demon in hell knows that something just happened because that wasn't just... That wasn't just a normal stomp. Something was behind that stomp. And it shook hell. And they know that Christians are going to start getting it. Now, when, they, when Christians get it, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is, is they realize who they are. And they stop trying to be somebody they're not. They just, they just know who they are, and that's what shows up. So when you show up, the demons know. The demons know that you know. And what they do is they literally opt out. They opt out. They literally opt out. They know if you know, but they also know if you don't know. If you decide not to be deceived, it's not going to be that much longer before you are clear in who you are. If you decide not to be deceived, Julie, Julie, coming? Okay. All right. If you decide that you are going to be who you are and that the books are open in heaven and what is written about you is, is going to happen because if God spoke it, I mean, it's just as much his word what he wrote about you in Psalms 139, 16, when he wrote each one of your days before they came to pass, that is just as true as the word of God because it is the word of God. 
if you believe that God does not lie and that he wrote a book about you, then you have to believe that his word will come to pass. That's, but it's you. You are that word. And it's not that hard to fight devils because they don't show up. You have to be fully convinced. This, this is not an exercise. This is not a game. This is war. We are here because God chose to have us at this time. We're still alive. I'm not waiting for the next thing to happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to start the next move. It's already moving. God's moving. God is moving because you're moving. He gets you to move and he moves. I'm telling you the truth. You're the game pieces. He's not playing anymore. His righteousness, his justice is speaking from heaven and he does not want the injustice any longer. There are many people that need you to stand up for them. There are people that need to have what they need to live off of. You, you are the one that's to believe for prosperity because people need need what you can obtain. You have been given the power to obtain wealth. He gave Israel the power to obtain wealth. This was to confirm his covenant. It's the same with healing. He gave us the power of the resurrection. That same power that rose Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal body. The same power. And you see this. Paul talks about it in Romans. get to the place where demons manifest and they want to go without talking to you and you say no I want you to hang on just a minute because I want you to send a message I want you to send a message to hell I'm coming after you Jesus destroyed the works of the devil he destroyed the works of the devil listen if he could have did something, he would have already done it. You got to call his bluff. A thousand will fall and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Moses wrote that. Moses wrote Psalms 90 and 91. He wrote 91 from the cleft of the rock. When God passed by, he wrote Psalms 91 because he realized that no one, no one can encounter any evil in the shadow of the Most High, in the cleft of the rock. No one, nothing can survive what he went through there in that rock. He realized that disease couldn't touch him. Nothing could touch him. And he, he, he wrote from that place of habitation. He was safe in that rock. He wrote, and that anointing from what he wrote in Psalms 91, that is yours. That is your insurance policy. You look over that policy every day. You listen to the Spirit. You eat what God tells you to eat. You don't weaken yourself. You keep your immune system strong. You pray in the spirit. You build yourself up in the most holy of faith. You, you pray for people. You, you're, it's not your responsibility to heal them. You pray for them. Let God do the healing. It's his responsibility. Listen, you all have 
given enough. You need to learn how to receive. God wants to bring forth into your life. We're receivers. He's sending his word and healing us. He's sending provision. Angels have been sent to unstop the barricades of financial wealth. Angels have been sent to break the barriers of financial wealth. There's plenty of wealth. It's in the wrong hands. It's time to address the evil spirits. God's not withholding from you. He's not withholding your, his healing from you or his finances or your deliverance. He's not withholding those things. He's not. There's not a supply problem. You just need a roto-rooter. You need to flush it out. Come on now. I am fully convinced that he is faithful. He is able to do everything that I've committed unto him. He's able to accomplish all that. He always causes me to triumph. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think. I, it's never entered my mind what he can do for me. It's never entered, the, the depth has not been calculated, what he is, is capable of doing. It's do you want to be the next move of God? Do you want to be? Okay, well what you do is you, you make yourself available through worship and you, and you know that the power that rose Jesus from the dead is in you and you let yourselves be ignited and you start to pray for people. You start to pray for each other. You start to prophesy and testify.
never forsake us You are always right here And you withhold no good thing from us Cause you are always, always with me You are always, always here And you are always, always with me You are always, always here Your glory shining on me You are always here Yes, you are always near And I can feel the light of your glory shining on me You are always here Yes, you are always near And I can feel the light of your glory
possible everything is possible 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 
everything is possible, possible, possible. Everything is possible. We're gonna see you move. Everything is possible, possible, possible. Everything is possible. We're gonna see you move. Everything is possible, possible. 